I don't know. know. All I'm saying is my Lynx just doesn't look like something's had its way with the back end of it. <laughs> I, have, I, have a, I have a Lynx ship. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. This show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. We are back. We are flying extremely low to the ground, on fire, one wing, slightly damaged, no landing gear, also known as a Saturday mothering night. Hey, everyone, I'm Vince Stone. That is Jordan Swing, and down there is Pedro Mateus Hello. with you at home live. Up in his form, cocaine, Voltron. Lads, it's been a busy, busy, busy week of um, troubleshooting. Troubleshooting here. And everything, everything was just working too fine. So I introduced new piece of equipment. Everything went haywire, and uh, good times were had by all. Oh, most importantly, the the, the one saving thing we were talking about this earlier, and neither, neither of you have really well, Pedro, you kind of know the feels. Where you buy the thing for the thing it came with, but not the thing itself. And yes, you know, yeah, <laughs> like a container. And you're like, oh, I really want that container. It's like, oh, it's a coffee, and it comes with a mug. Right. Yes, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I, 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 something just popped in my head. Buying bottles of Crown Royal for the bags. There. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Crown bags. A little get tortuna. You know, a little vibration clippy one. I was like, eh, I don't really. I mean, I have a tuner. It's just, I got to plug it in. Like, those are kind of neat. I was thumbing through it, then then I I saw that it it came with a bag, a bag to put it in. I was so like, oh, that's a bag, Vinge. Do not make any. S the bag says snark on it, so I got a bag of snark. <laughs> Fuck you all. <laughs> <laughs> totally just bought it. I don't even know where the tuner is right now, but I know where this bag is. <laughs> Um, Let me reach into my snark bag. And say, oh yeah, fuck you! <laughs> it's so tiny. He's, he has so little snark. He has, he's he's got to spread it around. Dude, dude, it's weapons grade snark. Another thing, yo. Um, by chance, maybe if anybody works with or knows uh, anybody in the OV, OBS development team, maybe maybe we could get a you know deck link API bump to like eleven five one or at least eleven one, so to work with that new hardware. I'm just saying it might be like well over a year out of date. And so that'd be awesome. I'd love you. I'll, I'll send you a free t-shirt if you make that happen. What's new with you, JB? Oh, I, I pulled the trigger on the upgrade to Fedora 32. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So appa apparently all the, the, the one problem I ran into was GStreamer was breaking the upgrade process because apparently they've renamed all the GStreamer libraries to GStreamer 1. And that was breaking. <laughs> Let me make an assumption. Because I'm, I'm thinking of the way I would do it. How many things would break if... Uh, uh, how many things threaten to break when you're like, you know what, let's just remove GStreamer. See, I was worried about that. <laughs> like, there are two things I'm like, do I even care about them? Probably not. How so... many times have you had, like, I need to take this one little thing? No, that'll that'll be your desktop. Yeah, that's the whole um, operating yeah. system. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> just uh, well, the, 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 this, this is why you got to be judicious with the dash Y flag. So oh, that I, you don't no, there is no dash Y in my life, period. It Never. does not exist, no. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, yeah, uh, every, everything upgraded fine. I updated the NVIDIA drivers just because the old ones, older-ish ones, the ones from pre may have a uh, have a bug with the 5.6 kernels. But, yeah, it's it's all surprisingly well and good. I started Steam. I played some games. It was like, okay, well, another yet another boring upgrade. Damn it, mm -hmm. Linux used to be exciting. <laughs> I've had, I've had so much time? excitement. I, I'm, I'm good with excitement. I'm full and brimming with excitement. How about you, Pedro? Well, uh, yeah, no, I spent, uh, mostly because the Steam box was already working just fine, and I spent a lot of time actively uh, messing with it. Uh, I got, uh, finally managed to make um, Steam Compositor Plus behave on uh, 2004, and it works if you just use the SteamOS installer script that they have on their GitHub page. It works now as it should, so yeah, and um, yeah, getting that to work. And basically, uh, what it does is it brings the games that spawn behind the uh, Steam um, big picture mode, like Dead Cells or the uh, Feral Screen of Nope, where they give you all the FUD. It's like, oh, you're not running the recommended distro, you're not running the recommended drivers those would show up behind so you couldn't ever 
just uh, play. I think it was... They only fixed that. I think it was in Rise of the Tomb Raider. Mm. So all the games launched before then, it didn't work properly but now you can you can just launch it it goes oh there's the windows and you just go with the seam controller it's like they're done thank you <laughs> man that just makes me wish that launching horses was just that little more legal than it currently is i mean i'm pretty sure the makers of besiege also share your opinion but for now we just have to pump our arms heave and hoe because it's the steam Yay! All right. Well, we got we got some we got a new beta client update. Uh, there are two issues being fixed here. Uh, first off, um, if you have a thrustmaster, you are no longer the thrustmaster until the most recent update. Um, and as well, uh, apparently Steam was using, or the library Steam was using to connect to their cloud sync services, was trying IPv6 first. So if you had it disabled in the kernel, it wasn't working. Uh, they've added a workaround. So now if you have IPv6 disabled for whatever reason, you get cloud saves. Yay! I'm going to be the first to say, Valve, make up your mind with IPv6, man, because it's like this <laughs> on again, off again. I don't know what to do. Should I have it enabled? Maybe disable it? You know what? It doesn't I mean, matter. You're going to give me like 30 megabits down anyway. At this point in time, you probably should have IPv6 enabled because there are no IPv4 addresses available in most countries anymore. So, yeah. <laughs> But I don't, but... I, I don't. I don't want to have to learn a new addressing scheme, Pedro. Ten dot ten dot ten dot ten slash eight is my subnet mask. You know what? IPv six is great. It's brilliant. Right up to the point. If you've ever run into a situation that would force you to manually key one in, then you're like, you yeah, know what? This IPv six stuff is rubbish. Fun. I don't. I don't want anything to do. <laughs> <laughs> Does it start with FE08? No. Damn uh, it. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Check this out, though. Uh, loyalty rewards. This popped up a Pavel Zundik? Maybe. Junik? 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 Well, Posted on the Twitter. <laughs> Valve is working on loyalty awards and rewards. Um, it has a point system and a system to add reactions to user reviews. Also includes reward items, redeeming points for badge levels and possibly game discounts question mark so yay i mean i i don't know man uh like valve is doing very non-valve things here's possibly the alleged reactions <laughs> deep thoughts being heartwarming hilarious hot take poetry zelpful Zupful. Zupful. Yes. I'm, fe I'm feeling Zupful. especially Zupful <laughs> this week. I don't know, because like... That's like when, when, when Helpful is going to give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> when, 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 I, when, I, when I look at something like this, though, I usually, usually for me, like, customer loyalty programs are just another data point for advertising, right? So they're just probably trying to look factor in, like, another vector for trying to get games that you're interested in seeing in front of your face so that you buy them because you got to consume uh, or, I, 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 yeah, I don't know. actively promoting people to keep buying on the store because uh, it creates that uh, sunk cost fallacy, right? Well, it's it, like, it, I've I think it could be even more malicious this, and they than give that, me all of this. Because <laughs> yeah. I can't think of how many times I bought something on Humble simply because I like looked up and you're like, yo, you got like six dollars in Humble rewards. I'm like, oh, yeah. well, that's six dollars <laughs> off something I was thinking possibly about. But all right, I'm just gonna buy it now since I get you know. Yeah, it's, 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 it's not a bad way of trying to convince people to buy stuff. So. I mean, it will result in people yep. buying more stuff. And it's weird seeing it come from Valve. I mean, this is, <laughs> they, they are just like powering Ford into like 2006, man. Um, <laughs> well, 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 considering their main competition is powering fast into like 1998. Well, they they I mean, also up. considering yeah, they're that. They're powering into the early days of Steam. Yeah. I, I do think it's very, the, the <laughs> Their main competition finally showed up. Yeah. Uh, there is that. Hmm. But, you know, Valve does a bunch of cool things, man. Uh, up to and including VR. Making games? Yeah. VR exclusive games. I think I remember Valve at, once, uh, at one point saying that they wouldn't do exclusives. Dude, check this out. Half-Life <laughs> Alex. This is something I was genuinely curious about, man. One million VR users to Steam in record gain. So we're seeing a nice little graph here going from effectively nothing to coming 
Little is makes no difference, up to 2%. Uh, RoadToVR.com, all this fun stuff. I got to say this, man. Uh, that's still less than 2% of uh, total Steam users. So, I uh, mean... Uh, Come, coming from the coming from the Linux users, who's holding strong at like 0.98. Yeah, um, I love reading this chart. Uh, do you run Linux, VR, Mac OS, or do you run the elusive eight plus CPU cores? Yeah, because every, everyone knows if you have eight or more cores, you can't use any mortal operating system. No. You have to pray. To, you have to use Temple OS. Oh, dang it. I'm using the wrong operating system. Clearly. Hold on. I got up. Jesus is so mad at you, Pedro. <laughs> so mad. <laughs> No cores for Christmas. <laughs> no cores for Christ. <laughs> cores for Christ. <laughs> cores for Christ. Hashtag. <laughs> hashtag cores for Christ. Oh, there you go. Tax exempt, baby. Here we come. <laughs> That's uh, that a thing. I think there's something of like real talk to be had about that because I was curious. You know, and I know we speculated about it way back when. Like, what would it be the adoption? If they just went full on dick move and released like Half Life Three VR exclusive, would it get people out buying these you know thousand dollar pieces of kit and plugging it up? I think it wouldn't hurt, as we have as we've seen with Alex, right? Like, well, I been... think that's as close as we're going to get. With I, I, yeah, I, I this mean, was so Half Life One Point Five. So well, yeah. so so I, I mean, it's it, if if they did it if they did it tomorrow, it wouldn't work. But like in in two three years. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Possibly. I don't know, man. Uh, it, it's very, I guess it's still early, but even with Alex, a lot of people, they play through that and they're done with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And uh, one of the things that uh, in the articles, like the very last graph is like the uh, split between the different headsets. And uh, it, you see that like the Oculus is like, oh, that's 47%. So yeah, because yeah, or forty four point six percent. That's, yeah. that's the cheap option. Like you, yeah, you, you, can, you can get you can get an Oculus headset for like five hundred dollars compared to the 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 index that's gonna yeah, be. Yeah, so you have a, a bunch of people who probably weren't using uh, Steam all that much with their VR headset, and all of a sudden they have a game on Steam that they want to play, and they already happen to have an Oculus lying around, so they're just going to plug it in. Yeah, from the from from the Linux side, it gets a little more hairy because like the the Rift or what what the Quest or whatever whatever the current oh, yeah. Oculus is, um, yeah, like that that has active driver support for Windows. And while the OpenVR project is doing a good job of making sure that there's a standardized interface for all of these VR headsets to connect to, if you're on Linux, you're kind of screwed if you're not buying a Valve headset because there's no kind guarantee of, your of option, support. Man. Yeah. yeah. Unless you have like one of those pre-production um, Oculus, uh, and e e or even the then, Razer ones, like the the very limited edition that Razer did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> two people have those. They know each other. Uh, <laughs> something that never will come, hopefully, to VR, but might possibly be getting a remastered is a game I really enjoyed playing for the first time like three years ago. Half Life Two remastered. There's been a listing found on Steam. Are we excited about this? Maybe not. Not not yeah. really. If you if if you look at the Steam DB page, they're like, yeah, this is a mod from Philip Victor, not Valve related. So, okay, so it's a mod that someone is actively doing. I mean. Probably not going to go as in depth as um, Black Mesa did, but might but yeah, be a good like thing. A, up, update, updating textures, voice <laughs> acting, like it could, yeah. it could make the game look nicer. I mean, Half Life mm -hmm. Two still looks pretty good for like a ten-year-old game. Yeah, <laughs> it looked really <laughs> 10, good. Um, uh, Fifteen. Ten. Okay, yeah. whatever. I'm old. Leave me alone, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all down for that. Uh, basically, what I'm saying is I'm sitting back with, I think, a lot of people going, yeah, I could use another excuse to play through that again. Mm -hmm. That's a fun game. You know, uh, Pedro and I went through it in hard mode. <laughs> with syner with, with the synergy. the added uh, yeah. synergy, yeah. <laughs> that, that was definitely hey, hey. an interesting experience, man. Uh, I, I, I was there for a couple episodes that, a.k.a. everyone's a bullet sponge. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> it was good times. One, one clip, two clip, three clips. God damn it, why aren't you dead yet? <laughs> Updated textures. Uh, re if, it, if it got the Zen treatment, it just didn't get the last eight years of the Zen map treatment. Uh, mm -hmm. 
think I'd be down with that. 100%. Yeah. So, do we have some news about Artifact? Yeah, we do. We, we, well, we got some do, children's card just games. Just to round out the, uh, the Valve games, uh, because there's surprisingly uh, surprising amount of uh, Valve game news this week. This is, uh, well, it's another Artifact update. We've talked about how they have been... Um, going back and trying to refactor everything that people didn't really like and sort of kind of caused the game to tank as quickly as it did. And, um, well, this week uh, they're talking about the shop. And uh, they're very careful in wording. It's like, what we didn't <laughs> like... It's like players often felt compelled to uh, I, stuff their I, decks I love this with cheap items. Art, by the way. Yeah. It's so, it's so good. <laughs> And uh, what do you mean? That's not final like, designs. I want, I want that to be the final art for Demonic Archer, please, yes. Valve. I guarantee you, you will sell more cards if you just make like super janky, like West of Loathing art. People, that's so good. Yes. <laughs> Uh, West of Loathing uh, collectible card game. Get on it. Um, but yeah, basically, it's them going, it's like, okay, so. The shop was a big point of contention, and I'm reading through it, and nowhere did I read, you know, the actual problem that people had with the shop, which was the monetization of that whole game sucked mm. to start with. It's like, yeah, that, that was the problem, and clearly you haven't fixed that problem yet, so why are you bringing this up now instead of like six months down the line when you've had a chance to uh, maybe come up with something new? Is it money? Why? <laughs> That's the thing, they already cocked up the release. The only way that they're going to get people back into it, or new people, it's going to take a significant amount of changes, and I don't see it. They're working on it. I mean, to their credit, <laughs> they're working. They're trying things. This is, uh, they could have said, you know what? It's baked, printed. It's already up. Deal with it. You don't like it. Whatever. We're Valve. <laughs> Rolls around yeah, in money. Yeah. I, they I do, mean, uh, I mean, they do give you a little email address that you can email to if you have anything to contribute and you'd like to help them, um, you know, bake uh, the new artifact into something that could be useful. It's a artifact beta feedback at valvesoftware.com. Shout out them. Yeah. Yeah, I mean to to Valve's credit, they are more than willing to say like, "Hey, people are engaging with our games the way that we thought they would. Let's change it." Unlike, you know, your Fallout 76s or your whatever that are just yeah. like, "Nah, <laughs> they're like, not Bethesda bad." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, look at it like this. Maybe Artifact is a way for them to go Hey, it's been a minute since we made one of these game things. Um, <laughs> baby steps, man. Yeah, let's get back to the groove with it. Uh, well, uh, speaking of people making Valve games, dude, uh, something that we played around with until we immediately ran out of levels after getting deaded by elevators was uh, Black yep. Mesa Coop. <laughs> Got some new hotness on this, don't we? Uh, what do we have? Uh, is this one? Yeah, a couple of new maps. And we have stable scientists, Jordan. I'm excited about that. Yeah, they're 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 they're. they're I, I I like going through the release notes and seeing if there's anything weird. Fixed many crashes. Scientists will never crash the game again. Damn, damn you, scientists! I knew we never should have trusted you. Also, also the the other one that got me was recompiled all maps. Now players can't damage each other even in deathmatch. What? Uh huh. <laughs> to the point of I'm that that we definitely learned about uh one. Somebody showed up in one of our games and he, we were all playing as like not Freemans and he showed up as mm -hmm. Freeman and he was in my way and we weren't able to damage each other. Apparently we could damage the other player if you weren't on the same mm -hmm. team. So I was like, get out of my way. He was stuck and I ended up just killing him to death. Mm -hmm. He didn't come back after that. The punk. <laughs> mm -hmm. so. But yeah, no, apparently being in different teams doesn't... Uh allow you to have a uh, friendly fire hmm. but does it work without proton yet that's my question you know if the developer kept it on his word and looked at it i'm pretty sure it's a stupid easy fix is like it's probably capitalization and they yeah but case, I, case I went through the, the notes and i didn't see like the capitalizations i did see like new checkpoints in those maps that we've already gone through uh but uh yeah no uh Okay, well, since our video is on the um, mod page as like the 
show this i'll put like the yeah. annotation so it'll link to this timestamp in this episode sure i can do that yeah i have the technology yeah. it's crazy like that <laughs> do it. hey uh we'll get new games though yeah like fury unleashed or furry unleashed i don't know what? furry unleashed we seems also like got a very different for game. that oh, we did <laughs> yeah we did yeah oh no um but yeah um so it's it's a combo driven side scrolling metroidvania um it's basically wombo combo the game because one, th one thing they say in the description kind of piqued my interest. Apparently, you can beat the entire game in one giant combo string, which does sound like a pretty interesting completion challenge. That's but, kind of neat. Yeah. yeah. But, but so, so if they're advertising, either it's real stupid easy to do, or it's insanely difficult and not worth your time. Hmm. Um, they, they, they also mentioned soft permadeath. Then I'm gonna, I gotta ask, how, how soft are we talking? Because I need at least are we three like quarters job. Floppy permadeath? I, I, it's probably I I like modern day roguelike uh, style of permadeath where you w once you die you can do the rogue legacy thing uh, i see the skill tree in one of the trailers there there we go uh yeah you just add points and when you start the new character it comes with a bit of a buff when compared to the previous one do well, you when, 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 when you said Rogue Legacy, I was thinking more like Rogue Legacy gives you the option where you can replay the last map you generated but like all the treasure is gone no, it's it's like the stats, you know, like you unlock the stats and you are sort of that, building up the that, castle. That, that's not that's not soft permadeath. That's just meta advancement. Yeah, round, round, Pedro. That, 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 no, that that's was just... aimed at both of you in your little slap fight. It was fun. I I, um, I, I know. I, I was pretending to be a cat. Wow. Moo goes the kitty, dude. Are you getting like a HD worms vibe from this? I mean, it looks very good, hipster pixel art, you know. Uh, yeah, I guess it's got a good feel to it. I I don't I doesn't it doesn't really seem hipster pixely. I mean these these look drawn. Um, yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, pixels can be drawn too. You fascist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a communist, damn it! Is... I can't wait, wait, no, no, hold on. That's the that's the last story. Never mind. Ignore that. Reread um, the script, damn it! Learn your lines. Never. Let's let's go on an adventure, then. Okay, fine. Uh, echoes of an adventure, not your regular ordinary adventure. Nay, none of that nonsense. Come on, switch. There we go. Good boy. Uh, what is this? You wander around, you melt snow, and I'm kind of down with that. 100%. I mean, it's a treasure hunt puzzle game. You get to explore Grandpa's ship. You know what I'm saying? Like, seriously, there's Grandpa's ship that you get to explore. According to the trailer. But, but, how much would you pay for this? Not much. It's free. It's, it's priced cheap. to sell. Cheap so, is free. Yeah. yeah. Free is pretty good. Yeah. If, you, if, if, you're go <laughs> if you're going insane from quarantine and you at least want to pretend to go for a walk, this might be the game for you. But yeah, it's like, it's like, it's like a puzzle game. It's sort of like that Yogg's Quest where you can like alter the terrain height and depending on how you manipulate the terrain, like secrets and other paths open. Ow, I just hit on a cardboard box. Jordan, I don't know how I feel about <laughs> this now. I, I'm reading through these system requirements and additional notes for SteamOS and Linux. This version has been tested Whoa. less than the Windows release and may have unknown issues. You know what? I'm fine with that. But the next sentence, for optimal experience, play the window. You know what? Dynafire. Yeah, yeah, no, that was completely unnecessary. You could have just left it as like, we didn't test all that much, so let us know if yeah. you have an issue. Could have just left it at that. They no, Honestly, I, I, they, they could have could also mean they, like, We tapped the export on Unity, so. Yeah, yeah. The, the, there, there should be like an option in Steam that's just a big disclaimer. Play in Proton. Just mm -hmm. do it. <laughs> Save yourself the time. But we wouldn't get gaming graphical jugger. What is this? this Engine evolution. Okay. Oh, well, okay. So <laughs> I, 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 I did, I did a double take on this because there's some, there's some, there's some English here. Experience the evolution of motorbike enthusiasm since 1912. Gradually unlock newer bikes in dramatic online races to current bikes in a sophisticated gaming economy. Um, <laughs> to be honest, to be honest, those people look equally dead inside as they do in anything from um, Codemasters. True. I mean, so it, it, it's it's free. It, it it has it has online wait, multiplayer. Wait, hang on. So are we t-posing? Yeah, we are. Yep. Yeah. I thought you meant on the bike. They're, just, they're not even holding onto the handlebars. They're just like, 
<laughs> no. No. That would, that would be hilarious if they were. But, yeah, you know, it's it's free. It has multiplayer. Might be worth a look. Um, apparently, it has online PvP. PvP so. and racing mm-hmm. game. That. Okay. In a, in a motorcycle racing game. Can you get like yeah. lances and joust each other? Because that would be amazing. <laughs> I'm not brave enough to try it in the after show because this is like, this smells like a herdlock or something else yeah, equally. Th- this as, smells yeah. like, you know, early days of Unity where it's like your whole system just goes. <laughs> maybe, maybe something to play around with a little bit later though. Ma- yeah, maybe. Although they need to change like the UI, like the menus. I was looking at some of the screenshots. It's like, why is that making my eyes hurt? Oh yeah, it's the striping. Okay. <laughs> put 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 more in. It hurts, Pedro. I didn't even notice. More that. stripes. <laughs> more stripes. You know, dude, next week we got to show up on like pinstripe suits and stuff. It's like Pedro's kryptonite. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, if I go crazy, will you still call me Superman? No, uh, no, probably not. No, no but shut up, uh, Batman. Maybe no, no, no. We no. can play Data Dream because uh, that is currently out on Steam. What the? And hot? it's a 3D. What? Yeah. <laughs> because it looks exactly like one of the aliens from um eiffel 65's um <laughs> music video there yeah yeah because uh, but... in the ge- in the game if you turn green you green you just die yep uh so yeah you're very much blue and they describe it as a 3d platformer a biodigital landscape filled with walking talking computer components uh finds itself in a state of peril following a malicious invasion mm. okay <laughs> I, I, Honestly, I, I, mean, I kind of the... lost it at the alien design because i saw that screenshot that you showed earlier it's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah like it, it, it definitely has an aesthetic and i'm like this looks super janky but like you could almost say this was a conscious decision like someone looked at it and went like yes i want everything to look like a rainmaker animation from like the early 90s i want my it, mtv I mean, motherfuckers you money for nothing and chicks are free what is under because <laughs> again we got to roll back to steven's sausage roll yeah you you never know what's you under look the at the yeah like that could this could be like one of the most mind just programmer experiences. art yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude uh tonight we riot indeed all right, so uh, th- uh, this game was uh, demoed at uh, one at um, what was it? Game Fair, Game Jam. That's that's the word I'm looking for. A while ago, um, and it finally got released uh, tonight. We riot is basically a crowd based brawler. You set your two sides. You got your you got your anarchists and you got your cops, and you're trying to play as the anarchists, trying to blow up the cops. Uh, it's got a bunch of multiplayer. Um, or it's got couch multiplayer. Um, at least so. I like there's the blurb. That. <laughs> it, it the 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 art style kind of reminds me a bit of Death Road to Canada, um, and yeah, it's uh they say it's unapologetically political. So, couch you know. co-op, twenty unlockable <laughs> weapons, a dog, whimsy, kaiju, um, kaiju, a wood chipper, yep. endless mode, and horror synth. Ah, my favorite synth of all the horror synth. Uh, what do we need? To <laughs> Not much. Yeah. Yep. It'll, it'll, it'll run on your cell phone. Uh, and it's, uh, you can pick it up for about 17 Canadian. What's that, like 15 US? Um, 14.99, baby. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so if so that's your jam, I mean, every time I see something like this, how, how often, I know we constantly harp on it. We're like, hey, online multiplayer, it's a thing. Right now, people who've designed games that are selling games with online multiplayer, like, yank, yoink. Yeah. The, yeah. Though, to, though, to be fair, this looks like one that could be played with uh, remote play and you wouldn't really lose much. Sometimes. Well, Probably. then again, we think about the internet being overloaded right now, too. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, Valve did build their own sort of VPN. So. Right. But well, they could do that. There's still Valve. that last copper mile you gotta, you gotta worry about. Yeah. Valve needs a. Um, Demake version where it just turns every game multiplayer into like a text adventure. Oh yeah, just like a mud get you yeah. flask. An ASCII uh ASCII, ASCII reencoder. Yeah. Huh. That'd be great. Can, That'd be can, can we can we get that for like Black Mesa? That would be amazing. No. <laughs> no. Boo. Coming up next, DOSBox finally enters the new millennium. Oh my god. And also set up scripts. Why are they a thing? 
it's about time we eh, maybe take a little I bit know, of a man, break. I, I really like how, like, right when I was transitioning to you, kind of looked into it, and you're like, Pepperidge Farms. But she didn't say that. <laughs> Now I want, no, now I want soft Farm cookies. remembers a great deal of many things. You but want an Amish it, it man to remember. sell you a Linux distribution. I want some goldfish crackers. Before the Linux game cast. It, 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 did you, 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 you missed out. You really should be watching live. You could have seen um, Ky <laughs> Kylo <laughs> Mateus. Pe Pe Pedro Ren. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, if, if, if you want to fund our remake of The Rise of Skywalker, you can there head on is. over to... Kind of. There, 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 there it is. Yeah. <laughs> that, I, every I, time I, I, I see I, that, I'm just like, you know, Nori, you can go to an optometrist now. You're in the UK. You can... every, every, from, from that angle, I'm like, Chris Angel, what? No, um... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, fun, 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 fun there, Star Wars remake. Go to LinuxGameCast.com, move your mouse over the support buttons, click on one of the links that appear underneath it. It's crazy. You can support us via a number of methods like ah. LibrePay and Bitcoin and uh, PayPal. And we got we got some merch. We'll talk about that later. But you should head on over to our Patreon because that's where all the good I'll do stuff what I want. is. I'm going to go look at the merch. Well, fine. You can do that while I talk about <laughs> Patreon. Okay. Um, <laughs> You you can you can get in at the bottom floor for a dollar a month pretty much or uh, four dollars a month. It's uh, you get access to uh, the Discord for a little bit more. You get access to the show notes. You can watch the show congeal week by week. You can even suggest stories or fact check us or just tell us we're idiots in our Google Doc. You get the you access can. to do that. You absolutely can. <laughs> um, also, if you're a patron, you can RSVP to the game streams. We're doing. Mm -hmm. I'm doing Serious Sam two on Thursdays. Pedro and Ven are going through Vol Return to Castle Wolfenstein co-op on Fridays. Oh, if you yeah. want to drop in, Patreons get first crack at uh, game slots. Do so you, if you want, play, I want yeah. to be part of history as it's being made? This is uh, we, Pedro <laughs> and I slammed. We were talking about this in the pre-pre super shows. And speaking of things you get um, access to, you probably get like that's like an extra four hours of content. If you like what we do, you want something to listen to, you get that. That's a little bonus soda we like to throw in for helping us out. But we have ran into a level on the RTCW Coop that makes the bridge level. If you remember Left for Brad, that series, and mm -hmm. how many hours <laughs> we went before we got through that cakewalk compared to what we're up against. It's still... <laughs> so what I'm saying is the more, the merrier. Indeed. Uh, we, we, we got a brand new Patreon. We got to we gotta thank Dodger. No, no not... Not Dodger? I said, yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh, yeah, but not that Dodger. The Wait, other Dodger. now I'm more curious. Is, what do you think I said? I said, no, we don't. Or I thought you said, no, we don't. <laughs> I, I think I this know, one's it, broken. We're going to hit a new Jordan. I, I, you know what? You, 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 you're just randomly contrarian sometimes. I've been trained to expect that from you. you, you that, that, one, that one's 100% on you. Um, well, yeah, we, we, do, we do got a story. You saw a little sneak peek of that before. Uh, we got t-shirts. We got stickers. We got coffee bugs. We will soon have pan fanny packs. We might have panty temporary packs. Panty facts. Uh, we will fax <laughs> you some facts. pantyhose. I do not want to see the high fantasy creature known as. <laughs> I am the great and powerful dragon panty, panty facts. <laughs> I don't know. Man. Uh, All right, now I kind of want to see it just a little bit, though. Yeah. Uh, maybe just the ankles. We, we, we might have some temporary tattoos of Pedro's self portrait in the future. Again, if you're not watching live. You're missing out. <laughs> I will straight. You know what? That could. All right. We'll see. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Uh, we, we also got Amazon wish list. If you want to help us put all our stuff together, uh, contribute some hardware to the show. Uh, you can find that also on the support uh, link. And yeah, if you donate some stuff, then you get your name on that glowing, shiny wall that no one can read behind Ven's it's head. It's too shiny, man. That's a that's horrible thing. <laughs> Hey, man, everyone who's uh, helped put together the studio, we, this is version 2.0. This is a more fluid version, um, but you will forever be immortalized, um, whatever you decide to write, within reason. Uh, you put a web zone on there, your Twitter handle or anything like that. Within reason, mind you. So um, <laughs> you, you, you can also make us say stupid stuff on, on the air by li leaving a little thank you note. Yeah. Within reason. <laughs> within, within reason, <laughs> yes. If it doesn't get us arrested. Again. Or, or taken off Twitch. We, we kind of need this platform. <laughs> all right. All right, all right. right. Let's, let's get into the news. Serious business, Do you guys. So serial. DOS box stagging. You uh, know what? Has... I'm going to give them credit right out of the box with the installation instruction putting Linux up top. Where it yeah, or, or Steam on Linux. Which Ooh. is a different Linux. 
It's true. <laughs> um, it's Steam us. Uh, but yeah, so it's a quote unquote soft fork, which basically means it is a fork people are going to start using now of DOSBox. It comes with. Uh, handy features such as SDL2 so that it doesn't screw up your multi-monitor <laughs> configurations <laughs> and supports controllers. I was a little mad because in the release notes they also added metal support which originally made me go, Bawar Vulcan! But then I realized that it's it's DOS. It doesn't really need Vulcan. You know what? You know what? You, you can just you die in a fire because I want to live in a future where I get to play Gorilla.bat with Vulcan. No, motherfucker. They have already implemented <laughs> OpenGL in Vulcan, so even if it's using OpenGL, you can still play it in Vulcan. Everything needs Vulcan is what I'm saying. We you need to remake heathen. the Linux kernel in Vulcan. <laughs> You're a monster. I'd use that. I, have, I haven't even gotten started yet. <laughs> I'm going to turn your food into Vulcan and your refrigerator into Vulcan and the entire Some universe. Moves, though. On the audio front, support for Flack Opus and MP3 CETA tracks. Nice. Yeah. Uh, they've also uh, enabled uh, dynamic recompilation to support 64 bit, which gives some better performance under Linux as well. Yes. This is good. Um, definitely with the SDL2, because that takes a little bit of the uh, sportiness out of, like, because nothing, <laughs> nothing is uh, the, the feeling if you've not had it. SDL1 with multi monitor setup when one or possibly two or sometimes all of your monitors just turn black. You're like, oh no. Mm -hmm. You don't, you're just, just got on the roller coaster. You don't know how it's going to end up. And then, and then one of your UHD <laughs> monitors is stuck in 640 by 480, and you're yeah. like, yep. Adventure time. <laughs> the pixels. The pixels. It happens, man. Uh, open Discord overlay. So there's a, there is a browser-based version of this, but you know maybe running another Chromium instance is eating up all your RAM. So they have a QTX 11-based one that looks pretty much like the one that shows up in the after show. Uh, it's not surprising yes. or anything, but it's pre it's pretty <laughs> bare bones. But again, it's a nice to have if you're doing a live stream. You is see that people... like ultra mega chungus? That is the chungus among us. Okay, it's like the wolf the among chungus. us. But... Let's see. You don't need much. What do you need? Python 3, more Python, and uh, a little bit extra Python. And it comes right up. Yeah, it's Python, uh, Python and Qt. That's it. Yep. <laughs> also, this is for Linux, and I'm reading the usage. Uh, there's no exploit for Linux, so just you might want to go back and, I don't know, fix that. You could build it on Windows if you hate yourself. Um, I mean, you could run exploit in Wine, right? right? <laughs> Maybe the install. Can you? Uh, <laughs> run it in Proton, see if it works. <laughs> Watch it work flawlessly. I'm like, okay, fine, T yeah. fine. Tell, tell, tell me about your Fertile Crescent, Pedro. All right. Well, apparently my Fertile Crescent is a real-time strategy game. Narcolepsy. You triggered the... I did. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> well... <laughs> The moral of the story is you can never sleep again, Pedro. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it kind of just markets itself as like an old school RTS, but it has some of the gameplay conventions of newer RTS. And you know what? I got to admit, I really like the Bronze Age as a, as a setting. It's really cool. It's kind of unexplored. Basically, nobody knows jack shit about anything at this time, so you could work in whatever yeah. fantasy <laughs> elements you want uh, and just claim, oh, it's how the people interpreted it. Um, yeah, it's got on online multiplayer. Check um, this out. It's got an Australia regional server. It is. It is also free. So if you want to check it out, it won't cost you anything. They have an official Discord, so you can pop over there and check that out. It's really small, too. We're only talking about 40 megs, so... 40, 40, yeah, 41 for Linux. To be, um, early in development, if that build number is anything to go by. <laughs> yeah, Something to play with, man. I mean, come on. You yeah. played the Maple Story thing. This is no worse than that. You can't play that on Linux. You can <laughs> play a, this on Linux. Thing. <laughs> yeah. I, so, I certainly yeah. don't play this on Linux because it's strategy. <laughs> well, I mean, that's that's one reason why the Fertile Crescent is better than MapleStory. With your Baron Crescent. Crescent, yes. Damn right, it, Crescent. See what you've started, Sven. Crescent! <laughs> Uh, Ultra kill. <laughs> Ultra kill prelude. Dun dun dun. There's another uh, thing from Itch. The links to all this stuff is in our show notes. Uh, it's a free demo uh, for the full game that's coming out in 2020. Um, 
and it, it's it's another shooter in like the vein of dusk and um what was it uh strafe or whatever yeah uh, it where... looks a lot like strafe <laughs> I, I actually i think it looks pretty good though for like the type of aesthetic it's, it's got to that capture. feel to it man it's got that uh maybe that, that, slightly... that quakey yeah, a slightly demade quake, like quake gel. Yeah. Think about that, or yeah. quake glide, and yeah. with flowers. Indeed, <laughs> flowers and zombies, it's zombie flowers. Um, but yeah, um, they 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 at the moment they have five levels uh, and a secret mission, uh, two difficulties, blah blah blah. Uh, you can download it from uh, itch. It's about 136 megs, and yeah, like I said, it, lo- it looks pretty good. I'm done with them, and I didn't get a chance to try it out this week. Uh, where are we at with these? Because you know, kind of like this, that cycle kind of uh, came and went. You know, like the retro, and it was a very short cycle, unlike like hipster yes. pixels. This <laughs> probably for about what six months we had a couple. I think we had like two on the show that were the yeah retro. Yeah, it was FPS. and uh. dusk. Yeah. Yeah. What do we feel about that, man? I mean, I, I so, like it. I liked Strafe a lot. Dusk, I could go without, but uh, well, at I, least the developers of Dusk are pretty <laughs> funny on Twitter. Uh, they're worth a follow. Uh, but Strafe, I liked. I liked Strafe a lot. <laughs> uh, in, in in terms of Linux, though, I think it's a little bit different from like the Windows folks because for a while on Linux, all we had was shooters. All we had was like IO th- Quake three based shooters. Yeah. Um, so a, a lot of a lot of a lot of Linux gamers are kind of burned out on the shooter genre. But having more of them isn't necessarily a bad thing, especially if they're well done. So hmm. yeah. Curiously. Curiously optimistic with this 100%. Um, I, I always like what it says on the outside, on the 10. Then I maybe it's all, it's always the mechanics, but then again, that's any game though, right? So I can't really. Um... What 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 I'm interested in is apparently they've taken some elements from like Devil May Cry, mm-hmm. which I'm I'm interested to see how that factors in. Mope. Mm. It's got a mope Spectacle setting. Tactical fighter first nope. person shooter. Uh uh-uh. uh, you see the flowers, you start moping. <laughs> oh no! Then then Jordan goes blurry and it comes back. I'm so blurry. You the mope too hard, man. Tears. You hurt the camera. Friends. Yes, salty, salty, delicious tears. Debane. Debwain. Gaming setup, baby. You know it. Another bit. Open source from GitHub. Interactive shell script for installing recommended tools to game efficiently on Debian. That's right. No more inefficient gaming on Debian because you know <laughs> everyone knows the gaming distro of choice Debian 10 baby the one I'm running for a stable production system absolutely first stop when it comes to Linux gaming and I might be slightly what's in this out about SH I gotta go creep Pedro did you see anything fun in here I well I had a look through the script and it sets up steam it sets up wine and it sets up Lutris. it also gives you like the choices like are you running AMD or Nvidia graphics and then it will either uh, set up the back porch repo for the AMD drivers to so you can get more up to date Mesa mm-hmm. or it'll uh, enable the um, Nvidia thing <laughs> that lets you install the Nvidia drivers and uh, yeah no it's it seems sane enough from what I could see of it. Yeah, it's 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 definitely it's definitely a bash script. I remember when setup scripts were a thing. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, it, man, it, it, because it, I'm looking here in the notes and I uh, I, I don't know what she's <laughs> Ansible. So, ans- yeah, an- Ansible is great for doing this kind of setup stuff. When I'm setting know. up a Steam box, after I get Ansible set up, um. <laughs> yeah, pip, pip, pip install Ansible. Ansible run a playbook. That's it. Um, I, I don't I don't know. I when, when when it comes to doing configuration management, and maybe my time in enterprise is is coloring my opinion on this. But if your setup is done via a shell script, you're doing it wrong. Um, it'll, it'll, it'll definitely work, but like maintaining this is not fun. No, sir. No, sir. Uh, especially, but mind you, you don't have to run a setup script across like 500 machines. You just got to run it on your one Debian gaming system. Well, that's, uh, you know, I I have a list of stuff I have to do to a box before it's like vinified with audioness and yeah, I I haven't even bothered scripting that and which I need to, but. Where, where where do you draw that line though for like a deployment? Like, when does a bash script become like okay, all right, I, I probably need to do this in something real. 
if at some point I need to do a nested loop, mm-hmm. it, I'm no longer using bash. Okay. I'm gonna switch. Well, I'm gonna, fair enough. That that that's my cutoff. If like I need like actual logic in here, now I'm gonna I'm gonna cut over to Python or something else. If, well, this if is it's handy. just like yeah. If you're using Debian and maybe something to look into, maybe probably already see that's another thing. I mean, if you if you're just running a regular Debian, you probably know what you get yourself into to the point of Mm, probably not if you're going to do something like this you do it yourself but hey man i like that the option is there <laughs> yeah i i mean like there's this stuff i and again like pedro said this really only sets up like wine steam and installs a driver so i i, I feel it could do a little bit more maybe mess around with the governor install game mode blah 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 but that's why it's open source and on github so if you got some neat features you want to add to the script do a pull request yep. speaking of neat features a neat feature that you can add to your stream um, when you play in games is a little transparent overlay in the bottom right hand corner of a Nintendo Power Pad that court wait. Why didn't you show me that, Pedro? <laughs> you can actually change it, not to the Nintendo Power Pad, but to the um little um 8 bit do NES Pro. They, they actually have this one as one of the overlays. But what are you no, talking this is about? about Open joystick display, and it, it's the thing that if you've ever watched one of my Tuesday uh, Dark Souls streams, you probably saw in the uh, lower right you corner see, there. It starts um, off, you're like, oh, is this just regular screen capture video? I don't Oh, what? Now I'm just going to <laughs> Yeah, no, Van the, did the uh, fancy upscaling and fancy zooming around, so it looks very, very nice. But yeah, it's... Um, it's basically a teeny tiny little video. It's five minutes that shows you. You go to openjoystickdisplay.com. Should have put that on the com. right side. Armchair director. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> and uh, you go, um, you download it. There's there's even uh, an app image if you don't want to use a tar.gz or the dev. And you set it up. And it's, Didn't you say yeah, that you uh, had to be careful not to make the buttons sparkle? You had to be careful I, I, with the I color you pick for the background because if, in my case, I was using the DualShock 4, and the DualShock 4 has green, blue, and magenta, which are like the default uh, options in the chroma key filter in um, OBS. So uh, that will uh, make that re- specific button transparent. And even yellow, if you do like I did in the video, it'll still make the circle button go transparent because apparently red has a little bit of yellow in it. <laughs> that or the chroma key uh, filter in OBS is jacked up and you actually need to set the color similarity down to, I think, around 300 so that it actually shows up as red. <laughs> so, so Pedro, I have a question for you because I am infinitely ashamed of my button mashing. Why in heaven would you want to show the people on your stream what you're doing on your controller? Uh, people like to stop all right, all right. certain hang on, specific hang on, people. Hang on, hang on, hang on yeah. <laughs> Think about all the weird fidgety bullshit that you like to see, Jordan. Like a fidget spinner? Yeah. <laughs> no, you think about like data and information. Like I don't care if it's on there or not. But yeah, there's those people that are like, I, I'm watching a game. I need to see what the person. Oh pushing. no no! I I, I I get it. I just at no point want to reveal this to my audience because it's terrible. You see, I no. Want that's one... Dark Souls. That that that's a whole meta in and of itself. It's its own thing. He's not necessarily <laughs> playing. Hey, I'm playing Dark Souls on Linux. He's more like, hey, Dark Souls people are gonna watch this. Um, uh, yeah, it's just like, oh, it's a Dark Souls uh, stream. I'm just gonna put this here now, to stop those to, people. See, now knowing this, <laughs> and now we've explained this, we need to file. I, I'm gonna have to file a feature request to get that map to an Nintendo Power Pad. So you I, I wonder if you can get it with like the old <laughs> NES Zapper. Just click. <laughs> oh no, dude! Uh, all types or like of an Atari. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Atari Lynx. <laughs> or, no, or, or just like the old Atari joystick. So no matter what button you press, it That's just, just hits the, the one. Button. Yeah, yeah. That would be great. Then we, the, the, we can map it to like I don't know, grapefruit. Yeah, or or like turn turn it into like a Guitar Hero controller. Oh no! Just, <laughs> then we do the face reveal cut, and Pedro is playing it with a Guitar Hero controller after it <laughs> No, like Pedro is playing it like with a blindfold and like no. a ball gag in his mouth. Guitar Hero while jumping up and down on a Nintendo power pad. 
on weed. <laughs> on two weeds. On two weeds injected in his eyeballs. Coming up next, uh, we're going to raise some zombies and try to kill some heroes in Eratus, Lord of the Dead. Welcome back to the chair position where the accused must survive trial by Fedoras, Neon, and Debois. That time in this exact order. Uh, then, and only then, the question will be asked, is it fun? Uh, this week we're taking a look at Eretus, Lord of the Dead. Unfortunately, I wanted to play Eretus, Lord of the Dance, but they haven't made that one yet. Nope. Uh, it's see. developed by Unfrozen, uh, done on Unity. You can pick it up for about 30 bucks. What is it? Eretus, Lord of the Dead, is a turn-based tactical roguelike RPG set in a dark fantasy universe. Lead an army of undead to help an angry necromancer in his crest to reach the surface world and bring death to the mortal question. realms. Uh, is yep. there such a thing? You know more about the fantasy world. Is there a happy necromancer? Like, oh, hey, absolutely. Man. Okay. Absolutely. There's like a, like a a necromancer you'd want to like go over to his house and play like Sonic the Hedgehog with? Oh, dude, because he gets <laughs> the skeletons to like make snacks and bring them to you. It's right great. On. Okay. Just joking. Like, ima imagine if Frank was useful and did stuff for you. Frank's still social distancing because he's being a bitch. See, ima <laughs> imagine, imagine if you had a non-bitchy skeleton. That would be great. Um, Tell me more about this fantasy world that you've constructed. <laughs> I, I, I will, but maybe maybe not right now. we got to talk about Aratus. Fair. Um, yeah, so uh, the dev did send us one key. Pedro went and done bought the other two for Pedro, for Pedro and Ven and mm -hmm. myself. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> yes. There, there, there was another Pedro involved. Don't worry yes. about it. Don't, don't ask too many questions. Um, so I guess... This week I'm I'm starting it us off. So on Fedora 32, 64 bit, I was you know I was expecting after the F32 upgrade there'd be some uh, janky bullshit, but there was none to be had. Um, everything looks and plays fine. Keyboard works, mouse works. The game looks fine. I didn't run into any technical issues, so it gets full marks there. Fun wise, all right. New new rule to the drinking game. Every time someone mentions Darkest Dungeon, take a shot. You will die by the end of this. Um, so yeah, you're playing for the other side, but the game doesn't really do too much to differentiate itself. The infinite map thing is sort of neat because it can leave you wondering what was sort of on the next... Uh, what uh, what other neat things you would have found if you went on the next other fork instead of the what path you went through. Uh, the combat itself is pretty solid, Darkest Dungeon, and I mean, that's good enough for me. I sunk about two hours into this game. I'm like, oh, it's been about two hours. I guess the combat's all right. Uh, it's pretty <laughs> solid. Um, it is, I will say, it is nice to be inflicting sanity instead of having to manage it. Although... I gotta say, the insane the insane enemies in this game do not do the insane crazy shit that Darkest Dungeon they insane don't do people much, do. do they? They're like, oh, insane. And like that 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 is what really screws you over in Darkest Dungeon. Um But yeah, uh the other the other thing that I kind of that's kind of the game loses points for is the unman undead management stuff is really weak. I mean, yeah, you can boost their stats, but aside from aside from like the arrangement. There's not really a lot of variety in ability spread. You can't like have different enemies that are good at di or different types of enemies that are good at different things. You all just have like wh whether or not their ability is leveled up and their stats that are different. But really, you just want to pump attack armor and evasion so that you do as much damage as possible. Um, Pedro, I saw your thing about uh, doing sanity. I found that mm -hmm. like sanity is subject to a lot less damage restriction. And if you can get if you can get them to zero sanity and then hit them like with anything, they just die instantly. So. It, it's it's just another way of like managing tougher enemies that okay that okay now i know what happened yep okay um, that saved my ass one yeah time. <laughs> yeah um but yeah like the 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 undead like they're, they're kind of different but there's a lot of overlap and you got to jump through hoops to unlock them i really feel that like darkest dungeon gives give you a little bit more meat with the player customization and they they sort of add in a, another layer in the sense that you're playing Eratus, who can affect things outside of the main combat system by like casting spells and moving stuff around. But I really never felt like that was that big of a change. And I found I wasn't really using the powers or spells all that much. Maybe they're more critical in the later yeah. game, but at least in the early game, not not much. I'm gonna give it three chairs. It's solid if you want like more darkest dungeon combat, but I feel there's a lot of wasted potential here. They could have done something special, but instead they did something mediocre. Yeah, that that was kind of my takeaway, but you know, you know, just on the technical side, uh, over here on KDE Neon with the Ryzen 7 3700X and the GTX 1080, Unity actually got the 144 hertz right 
except for that blinky shit that you saw happen just now. That, uh, and you can still see it on screen right there, uh, is the one... It's the one technical issue I had with this game, and it only manifests itself while I was recording. So most of you out there, it probably won't be an issue because you won't have uh, OBS open recording the game window while you're playing it. So speak for yeah, yourself. That, <laughs> for most of you watching, not most of you, uh, you know, currently on, on the um, show right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, fine. Drill yeah. it down. No, I've got to be technically correct. <laughs> All right. It is, like Jordan already said, it is Reverse Darkest Dungeon. You're playing as the undead, and you're the one causing stress damage uh, and causing the enemies to go crazy. Unfortunately, like Jordan also mentioned, it's not... Um, you, you don't have, like, the enemy characters going crazy and hurting each other or th leveraging insults at each other and causing more stress damage to each other. No, 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 no. Basically, the winning strategy here is uh, create a party of damage dealers and kill everybody. That, that's it. <laughs> and it's very effective. Uh, maybe it's the kind of play style that I prefer in games, but yeah, the stress mechanic for me, as much as I tried, it it just seemed not very useful when, you know, dealing damage seems to be a lot more effective because it gets rid of the opponents as quickly as possible. And... Um, the, the way that you level up, besides, you know, you can level up Iratus, you can improve one of Iratus's abilities or something to improve, like, the crafting of the undead. And if, you know, you're going to take my advice on anything, it's like, focus on the crafting of the undead first, since the undead are the ones doing the bulk of the work. And, yeah, Iratus just casts a spell here and there, maybe does an ability here and there. But... It's the undead that are taking the hits, and they're the ones that you have to manage. So, I would say focus on those and ignore everything else because it seems a bit pointless. And um, to sort of reinforce that, you also have the buildings that you can get, like, on your darkest dungeon style of thing. You go into town and you have the buildings, like you have the tavern to heal, like, the stress related issues, you have all the other buildings that serve their own purpose, like hiring uh, new people, doing whatever. Here, you actually have to sacrifice one of your dudes that you've crafted or created or found in one of the levels to create oh. that building from the ground oh, up. Oh, 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 buddy. I lost a level 7 death knight because of that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, that, was, so... that was bad before I figured that out. Yeah, no, you actually have to sacrifice one of them to get the building started. And if you want to level up the building, you then have to sacrifice another. So, yeah, no, the undead are the focus here. And as long as you focus on them and you buff them and make sure that Iratus is basically focusing on its army rather than himself, yeah, then uh, you might have a better time. Uh, you know, assuming you this is your kind of game, because if I wanted to play Darkest Dungeon, I'd be playing Darkest Dungeon, so I'll give it two chairs. And finally, uh, it's not my gem, but let's talk about how it ran on the Threadripper 1920X, 32 gigs of RAM, NVMe drives, 2060, just played at UHD. Solid, solid, solid. These are some good things. This is what I like... Um, is very competently done you know it launched full screen everything was humming along right out of the box 60 at 2160p i popped it in 1080p window received the same technically nice piece of work i enjoy that now let's talk about fun because well we got to talk about the itis and uh i shall once again play the avatar of the audience member who really wants to like these games man i mean i go into like darkest dungeons dicey dungeons anything that ends with dungeons usually it's this um, but I never do. This one, this one kind of cut me off guard because it opens up with nothing short of a legitimate warning that, well, warns you uh, about the many ways that this game will melt all of your face and your fingers and all your other extremities. With extreme turbo difficulty, you have been warned you're going to get skull fucked constantly and you, you know what you're in for. Immediately followed by another screen that lets you put it in like... Turbo easy mode. Don't hurt me, mommy. 
<laughs> it's like, it, that kind of sucks some of that effect out. And I was like, because of course I went to like, I actually upped it from easy mode because it was too boring in that. Um, it is what it is. You know, I went last this time because I don't have a lot to say. For me, you boop things, you wait, you boop them again, then you get killed by RNG. This is what I get out of all of these games. I always go in like, maybe there's going to be something more. Uh, that's kind of where I'm at with this. You know, now, instead of like recruiting, like you were doing in Darkest Dungeons, you craft new characters. Did I get that right? That's effectively what you're yep. doing because you get yep. like brains, mm -hmm. potions, armors, and you can build like your knights and, you know, the useless banshee that like, why is that there? You can spread insanity. Has no attack, like physical damage whatsoever. Um, which is up with a bunch of knights, and that's different. Which you know that that was fun for a second. You can do enhancements and stuff in a little crafting menu. It's reasonably straightforward. Uh, if you look at the bottom of the game, if you're watching the video, there's a stack of stats and all that business. If that's your bag, it's not. Art and sound. I'm going to say this. Uh, am I wrong when I say I think it looks... Is it more of a style choice or is this just graphically better than Darkest Dungeons? Well, Darkest Dungeon is like a lot of hand-drawn art and it's meant to like... Be this has clearly been drawn with feet. I mean, this... this <laughs> well, um... I don't, I don't know. This seems a lot more it's like digital, digital painty. Art. Yeah. <laughs> I like the look of it. Everything's well done. Uh, from what I played, it seems like you're basically a fighting the same groups of people with the occasional uh, new one thrown in uh but at the end of the day if you've been looking for a game of this type to get into um i'm just gonna tell you and maybe you've played darkest dungeons because the biggest difference between this and darkest dungeons at least for me is like the five dollar price difference uh, i couldn't <laughs> really tell you i i'd like to get into it but the second we start getting into spreadsheets which I know that's the gem for Pedro. I know that's the gem for a lot of you at home, along with Jordan. It's, you know, it's got to be simple, man, because I, if I got to pick one, I'm going to pick with Dicey Dungeons. It's simple enough for then smash button, then occasionally win. So um, not on any technical merit whatsoever. I think technically the game is fine. Mechanically, according to Jordan and Pedro, it's balanced. And it's kind of an interesting take. I got to give them that, where you get to play the baddies finally. But... Yeah, just if you're me, stay away. You're not going to have a good time with it. Well, was I fair? No. <laughs> Your mom wasn't but fair we're, either, but we're, we're, not we're, 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 we're not We're not. We're not Fox <laughs> News. We don't have to be fair and balanced. <laughs> um, all right, coming up next, we debug more RSS problems, because this is a recurring segment in the hate mail. What is, what is wrong with our RSS setup? And we talk about Mapples. It's the end, and chances are something about this episode left a sour taste in your mouth. It may be a brain tumor, or it could be Linux Gamecast Weekly. I don't, I don't know. know. All I'm saying is my Lynx <laughs> just doesn't look like something's had its way with the back end of it. <laughs> I, have, I, have a, I have a Lynx-shaped tumor in my brain. Yeah, you need to see a doctor if that's the case. But hey, Doctor Linksis, <laughs> <Two holes. laughs> if you don't have uh, Doctor Linksis hanging around your brain, you can uh, maybe go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button, and uh, send us some of your hate mail. Uh, this we're open 10 to one hundred. Well, at least it does a hundred. So yeah, right. <laughs> But yeah, uh, if you're a game developer, there is a one of the bits of bold text is directed at you. Please include three keys or something that we can all play, because if we can't all play, we're just going to mock you. The same goes for Kickstarters, obviously. Depending on how this one guy gets <laughs> back to me after being spandertized, <laughs> uh, we, we had a discussion about that in the pre-pre-super shows. And I probably will be featuring one of those emails uh, yeah. next week, so stay tuned. It's been a while since we've deconstructed um, an advertising pitch. But coming up first, this is from Jim. Jim says, hey, man, I've added a number of podcast RSS feeds to, are we going to go with Volumo? Volumo? Volumio. Volumio. Actually, it's a plug-in to Vol... What? All right, whatever. That's Volumio. Same thing. <laughs> 
Uh, works fine. I tried to add yours, which would be all of our RSS feeds, all both of them. Um, but it comes up saying there's an error parsing it, so I, could, uh, I didn't compare destination Linux RSS feeds to yours. Maybe that might help to see what's different between yours and theirs. Whatever it is, uh, it's a bit less stable than... Okay, Noah said give it a try, but it's less stable than I'd like, but sometimes it works. Hey, man, that's a little <laughs> close to home. Um, anyway. Oh, KD level. Okay, all right. <laughs> what's different about your feed structure? And there's... Is it possible to make it work with Volmio? Volumo? Volumo. <laughs> Volumio. <laughs> Mio. Mio. Uh, I did write him back, but uh, Pandora, Apple, Google, Feedburner, um, Sailfish OS. Sailfish. <laughs> uh, all the other ones. It validates against RSS feed, including the W3C RSS feed validation service. So the only thing I can think is, um, especially if you're hitting it later in the week, you're going to be hitting Cloudflare. Mm. And I do know I have Cloudflare set to ignore if you um, send a request with a blank field on your OS. You don't have a OS defined. Okay. That was also the issue with Sailfish. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. So if that, that might be the thing. But yeah, there's nothing uh, to be very, there's nothing I'm willing to change for a program that kind of works sometimes. <laughs> yeah, for that one bit of yeah. software that seems to crash a lot. <laughs> We're good. But thanks for listening to the show. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on, uh, Jordan, what have we lost you to live on the show as we're recording? Absolutely nothing. I'm just staring at the notes and paying attention. How dare you? That's why you're so out of place. We're doing none of those yeah, things. Yeah, you don't pay attention ever. <laughs> what? I wasn't paying you just attention. talk. Yeah. You interrupt everyone. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you take the next one, Jordan? <laughs> All right, the next one is from, I actually just closed it. Ah. Oh, no, it's from, it's from Cody. Uh, so he's... he's uh <laughs> no, uh, he's talking about, um, to be honest, Apple stopped being good when they removed color from the logo and went with the boring silver Apple logo. They will eventually remove everything until their proprietary API is the only thing you're allowed to use. I'm glad Valve went, nope, before this happened, rip, open gold max support, BT dubs. Um... Was this was this about one of the conversations we were having in the in between segments? No, this was or... that story that we spent about four minutes on last week when uh, steam dropping. Uh, oh, with VR the with the VR, oh, yeah. right, uh, right. VR on Mac. Yeah, yeah. I I I almost <laughs> forgot about it, just like Apple did. Heyo. Um, I I mean I mean I don't I don't know. I, 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 I as I think the one person here who has to routinely use Apple products, but yeah, you love it, man. You're like this is awesome. I'm sucks. Just gonna plug a monitor into it, and uh, well, I, I don't I don't have six thousand dollars for the monitor and the stand. <laughs> you got to save up for the wheels, man. Don't blow your money. Those wheels yes. are like four hundred bucks. What is? It? Oh, yes. look at you with your 1998 MacBook, yo. Much it's a 2013 MacBook. Thank you very much. <laughs> this was a 2015. Oh, thank you very man. much. No, but like, yeah. I mean, a Apple is becoming less and less developer friendly. Um, I tried to update Xcode this week. That was fun. Why? That's what <laughs> You're out of space. Uh, no, I'm not. No. Well, oh, I, I, I needed. I needed. I needed to update up everything that you've ever had on your SSD at any one point. It's like, can you get rid of that, please? I, ne I needed to update Xcode because Homebrew <laughs> builds were failing. And I'm like, man, this is the thing that actually gives you the BSD utilities. You know, the useful software that you can run on your yeah. Macintosh. Um, yeah, so... Uh, so as 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 for as for Apple on VR, like I said, I think we were all frankly surprised that like anyone was trying to make that work. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I genuinely... I'm, I'm coming from the thing, like, I was definitely saying... A, I good on you for having that kind of money to burn. Um, but B, just trying it because that's right up there. That's only slightly less difficult than getting it set up on Linux, I would imagine. Well, it's slightly less expensive setting it up on Linux because you don't have to pay yeah, the price of the computer and the pay, headset yeah. for just the computer <laughs> that can run the headset. 
Could. And then you have to buy could. the headset on top of that. Could run the headset. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, oh, I mean, op OpenGL Max support lives because you can now run um, OpenGL and Vulkan on Metal. So you can run OpenGL implemented in Vulkan mm -hmm. implemented on Metal. You guys so can all just work. run Metal. That'll work. We're Apple. That, that's how we do it. What, what? What, what, what's that? I can't hear you over the sound of my iPhone app store sales. Right. <laughs> Unfortunately, in this brave new world, and on that brave new bombshell, um, we gotta cue the music. Mm. Coming soon to iPad OS. Just one episode. <laughs> Good I night, want, ladies and I, gentlemen. I, I didn't want you to bring up an iPad, but fucking there it was, Ben. <laughs> if you want to get in touch with me, um, I'm Vin Stone, at Vin Stone on Twitter, uh, at Vin on mass.lunsteamcast.com. I'm there, I'll say things, and it'll be kind of brilliant. I am the world's biggest Apple fan. You can find me on Twitter on <laughs> AppleFan42069XX. No, I'm, I'm Jordan. You can find me on Twitter at the Burning Fool or on Discord vaguely sometimes. Maybe, I don't know, at Projo at mass.lexgamecast.com. And I am at unaccounted4, that's F-O-U-R, on Twitter. Or if you want to find me on Discord, it's unaccounted4 with the upside down T, uh, hashtag 0123. Yes, I got that number. That's ahead. right, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> iPad lover sixty nine at mass dot Linux. Here's some credits. Go fuck yourself. I love I love sixty nine at linuxgamecast dot com. We need to set that up as a mail address. <laughs> I love sixty nine. I love sixty nine at linuxgamecast dot com. Oh, at linuxgamecast dot com. Actually, <laughs> we gotta we gotta thank we our Patreon. Level the like, main first. <laughs> yeah, uh, Hap Haplo's giving us way too much money a month. Uh, we got Artharin, <laughs> the Atomic Ass, Empty, Mike G, Bob Ramps, Aldius, Magik, Scoots, and Frostclaw, and Drummer, and Lutris, and hey, Libre Frosty. Quest. Frosty, Libre you want to do a show? <laughs> Send me Frosty, a demo the claw baby. man. Yeah. Uh, we also got to thank our producers like David S. Special G, Michael Egal, Topkal, Gaius Frieza. Baltar, other other Strider, Max, Yabo, Sturdy S. Fish, Kresge, Che, Mr. Alert, Nicole. Michael N, Brad S, Odin, Massimoni, Dan Dean. W, Nubin, Dan Dirt, Cheap, Grayson is on there twice. <laughs> Linux Noob, Joe Angel, Gray. Oh, I'm surprised KTW, you can put your iPad down long enough that. to look at Gonzo2000, <laughs> Jupiter Broadcasting. Mike, Renaud, Lut I'm Lutris again. Rene. Oh! Bram. Ross Brock. <laughs> Christoph 3, Christian, Linux Drew, Abstraction, Desk Geek, and G our newest Patreon, JT. Dogger. Yes. But not Art? that Dogger. D not dogger. that Dodger, no. <laughs> but it's the old Dodger. Five dudes. <laughs>